and welcome to another tutorial for the LXL Core 3 uh, Math Syllabus. In this particular video I just wanted to take a few minutes just to review the chain rule we learned about in the previous video. I gave you a method to work out how to differentiate a composite function, a function of a function, but I want to give you a, a, a quicker method of doing this, a slightly quicker method, perhaps by inspection. So, to start with, I have put down four of the functions that were in the previous video and I'm going to write down beside it what the gradient function was or what the derivative was. In between I'm going to leave a space and see if you can work out how I might get from one to the other. So for this one, dy by dx, it turned out to be equal to 6, 2x, subtract 1 to the power of 2. This one here, dy by dx, it turned out to be equal to 5 multiplied by 12x cubed plus 1 multiplied by 3x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 4. This one, dy by dx, it turned out to be equal to 5x, 5x squared plus 1 to the power of minus a half. And the last one, dy by dx, it turned out to be equal to the following. Negative 3, 6x, subtract 3 to the power of minus 3 over 2. Maybe you'd like to pause the video for a moment and just see if you can think of a way of getting from the original function to the gradient function or how I might have been able to do it in my head fairly quickly without letting u be 2x minus 1 in that case, u be 3x to the power of 4 plus x in that case and doing the chain rule I showed you previously. Take a few moments. Well what seems to have happened here is that this expression, 2x minus 1 to the power of 3, it seems to have been reduced by 1. We've also seem to have brought down this power, 3, and multiplied by this number here. So we seem to have done 3, bringing down the power, multiplied by the differential of this bracket, 2, and then reducing the, the power of this bracket by 1. And that seems to have got us that answer. Let's see if this is working here as well. Bring down this power, 5, multiply by the differential of the bracket, which would be 12x cubed plus 1. Reduce the power of this bracket by 1, 3x to the 4 plus x to the 5 minus 1. It's exactly how we got there. Let's try it here as well. Bring down the power of a half, multiply by the differential of this bracket, which would be 10x, and then reduce the uh, power of this, uh, of this bracket by 1. 5x squared plus 1 to the minus a half. Of course, a half times 10x is the 5x. And lastly, does it work here? Well, yes. Bring down the negative a half times by the differential of the brackets, which is 6 then reduce the bracket in power by 1, 6x take away 3 to the negative 3 over 2. Of course, negative a half times 6 is equal to negative 3. And so we seem to have found a quick way of doing it. Without doing the long method I showed you in the previous video, there's nothing wrong with that method, but by inspection can be pretty useful to us. What we do here with any um, function to a power, with any complicated algebraic function to a power, we bring down the power, multiply by the differential of the brackets, and the expression in the brackets raise it to one less power. So let's see if we can formalise this in a rule. Function raised to a power rule. If we have a function y, let's say it's f of x, some function of x, raised to a power, let's say raised to a power of n, n could be any number, then the differential of this, dy by dx, would be given by, where well, you bring down the power, n, 
you multiply by the difference of the brackets, which would be f dashed x, and you reduce the power of the expression in the brackets by 1, as so. So let's see if it works. So say, for example, y is 2x plus 1 uh, cubed, then dy by dx would be equal, bring down the 3 times by the difference of the brackets, which would be 2, reduce the expression in the brackets power by 1, 2x plus 1 to the power of 2. It would therefore be 6 multiplied by 2x plus 1 squared. And this is a nice, easy way of, of working out um, a differential by inspection. This does extend to a function of a function, a composite function. For example, if we have a function y, which is a composite function, f of g of x, okay, a composite function, then the derivative dy by dx is equal to the following. You differentiate the expression within the brackets, so g dashed x. And then you differentiate the outer function, f dashed, but you evaluate it, you work it out at g of x. Now again, this, this is going to make a bit more sense in later videos when we do other versions of the chain rule, but let's apply it to uh, above. Imagine we have the function g of x is equal to 2x plus 1. And we have the function f of x is equal to x cubed. Hopefully you would agree with me that f evaluated at g of x, f of g of x, you put 2x plus 1 into, uh, into the place of x here, uh, in f of x, you would get 2x plus 1 cubed. Okay, hopefully you would agree with me that f of g of x is 2x plus 1 cubed, just like up here. Then using this rule here, let's see if this rule matches to this rule. dy by dx would be equal to the following. It would be equal to g dashed x. So g dashed x I'll write g dashed, g dashed here. g dashed must be 2. Okay, and f dashed is 3x squared. Okay, so g dashed x would be 2. f dashed evaluated at g of x. f dashed is 3 something squared, 3x squared, but you are working this out at g of x, which is 2x plus 1 squared. And we get, as we got previously, 6 2x plus 1 squared. So it's important we can uh, use the chain rule by inspection. It really helps us out later. We can obviously always use our um, let u equals and, and do that sort of um, work there. But it's also handy to be able to spot these um, by inspection, it makes our algebra a lot easier. I hope you found that video useful and you can start now trying to do the chain rule by inspection as well as the long way and over time maybe you will get so good at it you can do the chain rule by inspection each time. Thank you for watching.